Thailand has one of the highest road fatality rates of any nation in the world. So if this is going to be your first time driving in Thailand, and you've never driven on the left side of the road before, you might want to reconsider. But if you still want to hire a car, I have some tips for you. Coming right up. One, two, three, oh. Hello. Hi. We are Kencho Quest. We travel to open our minds and our hearts. Let's take friends around the world. First off, I just want to make it clear that I am not an expert at this. This is based on my personal experience driving here in Phuket for the past month and a half. We chose a local company called Joe Rental Phuket. I'll put a link to it in the description below. Anyways, their service was fantastic. We chose them because we had asked around and they seemed really great and all. And what was an extra bonus was that for no extra charge, they delivered the vehicle to our apartment and also picked it up when we were done with it. The total cost for the rent per month was 14,000 baht. Now you can, this varies depending on where you go to. If you go to like budget or Avis, I think you're gonna pay, you know, up to 20,000 per month for this. And I've, I've heard of people renting them as low as 12,000 baht per month. And of course, it's gonna depend on the type of vehicle. We rented a Honda City and it was in like new condition. It smelled new. The car was spick and span clean no dents on it or anything. The rental process is almost the same as anywhere else I've rented a car. Basically, you have to go around, check the car for dents and dings, and you know you sign a waiver and stuff. But I think the most important thing is to make sure that you have proper insurance coverage. I'm not gonna go into details on that because I don't know a whole lot about it and I don't wanna give you misinformation, so just make sure you read the fine print and make sure you are covered in the event that you have an accident. We also put down a 2,000 baht deposit, which was really nothing. It was just to cover any little incidentals, but we were given that back in full when we returned the car because luckily nothing happened. But they said it is very common for people to get dings on their cars and, and it certainly makes sense because when you go park your car sometimes, the parking spaces are very narrow. Also, the car fit our family of five very comfortably. There's two adults and three young kids with a baby so we were able to put our baby seat right in the middle and our two other kids on the sides and they fit very comfortably. Also, the trunk had plenty of space. Of course, we couldn't put all our luggage in there so we couldn't drive it to the airport, but it was plenty of space to you know, go to the beach and go shopping or anything like that. Also, they didn't really care if we made the car dirty. They told us if it got really dirty, we could go just go take it somewhere to get it cleaned and that would cost a couple hundred baht or just return it the way it is and they would just charge us. Other than that, like I said, it was about the same as renting a car anywhere. So you're ready to rent a car. These are the things you're gonna need. You're going to need your driver license. You're going to need an international driver permit. Now, this can vary. Some places will rent to you without this, but I highly recommend you have that. And you know, the major companies are gonna require this and you're gonna need your passport too. When you're out driving, you should have these items with you at all times. You should have your driver's license, your international driver permit, your passport, and also your rental agreement, which we just kept in the glove box the whole time. I think the most important thing when you are out driving is to be prepared for anything. You have to be alert. This is not the United States, certainly, where you can be a lot more relaxed on the roads. You need to pay attention. You don't know what's going to come at you. For instance, we had cows come at us, random people crossing the street. You know, I mean, that can happen anywhere, but sometimes people just dart it out in the road. And there's also a lot of three-wheel vehicles out in the more rural areas, especially in Phuket. And sometimes you can encounter those in Bangkok as well. So you need to be prepared for that and be prepared to slow down and be prepared for motorbikes to be crossing and passing you at all times anywhere. Let's just assume there's always motorbikes on the left side of you, on the right side of you, in front of you, and in back of you at all times. Assume that. And if you do that, you will not be swerving around. Also, make sure you keep a constant speed. So it is very common the speed limit is going to be between 50 and 60 kilometers per hour. However, from my experience, hardly anybody drives that speed. The only time you see people driving that speed usually is if they're another tourist like me or if they are like a three-wheel motorbike or a slower motorbike and they're to the side. So what do you do? In my case, what I did was I just go with the flow of the traffic. So even though it says 50 or 60 kilometers, most everybody's going 70, 80, even up to 100. I don't ever go that speed because I don't want to get a ticket and get pulled over. So I would average around between 60 to 80, depending on the flow of traffic. And of course, if there's somebody slow in front of you and it is not safe to pass, you know, just use your common sense, just fall back, you know, give them their space, especially if it's a three-wheel vehicle or a motorbike and it's not safe to pass, just fall back. They understand that, hey, you're being cautious and they will just go around you if they want to. So, you know, don't feel pressured by other people. The key is to be constant in whatever you do. If you're gonna go slow, stay slow. If you're gonna drive fast, stay driving fast, don't go in and out and be indecisive in what you're doing because then you're just going to freak everybody out. That's the same anywhere, right? 
Again, with motorbikes, just give them the right of way. Always make space for them because again, they are gonna be coming from you at all sides. And then also usually when you come up to a light, there will be space in the front for motorbikes only. Even if it doesn't say bike or anything like that, leave that extra space in the front for motorbikes because regardless of that space is there or not, they are going to pull in front of you. So give them that space. And when you are making turns, make sure you look for motorbikes because there's a good chance that they are going to try to pass you on a turn, either on a left turn or a right turn. Again, watch out for them at all times. What's also very common here in Phuket anyways are roundabouts. In the United States, we don't have many of those. So if you are new to a roundabout, at least from my experience, what you should do is always be on the outside lane. So if there's two or three lanes that are going to turn to go around the roundabout, don't be on the far right side. Let them be the blocker. So go to the middle lane or the, to the farther left lane and wait till they start turning before you go. That way you got someone going already and blocking you just in case you need that. And then you can go around. Now, sometimes, you know, people aren't gonna go. So you just need to be ready and be very careful and go when it's safe. In general, there aren't nearly as many stoplights as there are in a lot of the Western nations. So be prepared to make U-turns. That is the most common way. And what you'll do is you'll just keep driving. You'll see the road where you wanted to go, but just keep driving because there was no way to turn and look for that U-turn. There will be one coming up soon. And then there will be a spot for you to pull into the right to make that U-turn. But if you don't feel safe making that U-turn, just go ahead and get back on the road and go down until you hit a stoplight. And then what I do is I will just make a left turn there, find a safer place to make a U-turn and come back and then make another right turn at the light because sometimes that is just the safest way to do it, especially when the traffic is really heavy. Also, there are many blind intersections, so be prepared to stop at those. Sometimes they will have mirrors on different corners, but even so, stop when you come to them because a lot of times motorbikes are just gonna come flying by. Once you feel it's safe and it's clear, then go. Also, there are a lot of road markings. In particular, if you come across four wide red marks, that means a crosswalk is coming up. So pay attention to that. Probably the easiest thing of anything during our whole entire rental period was getting gas in the car. It was quite easy. You just drive in, it's full service, and you just tell them to fill it up, and they fill it up. And to fill up a full tank for us, it cost about 1,000 baht. And that breaks it down to, it was about 30 baht per liter. Those are my tips for driving in Thailand. I hope you found that useful. Let me know in the comments below if I missed anything out that was really important. And we'll see you in the next one.